Hey guys, it's Linda Winter from Winter Designs. I have a bunch of new stuff. So much stuff that I haven't gotten a chance to film videos on all of them. So I wanted to give you a sneak peek as to what these were. You can follow me on YouTube, Linda Videos, one word, Linda Videos, and you'll be able to find new videos as I post them. Subscribe to my channel and that way you'll get a notice every time I do post something. And if you follow me on Facebook, you'll find out about different sales and different specials and coupon codes that I have as well. Okay, so let's get started right here in in front of me. You may have seen this before. Beth and Shirley, you know, my friends Beth and Shirley, they make a lot of stuff for me. And these are two that Shirley made. And she put a little note in to tell me what kind of fusible, you know, interfacing she used and those kinds of things. This guy here features, you can see here in one of the petals, she's got the Day of the Dead and then nothing, and then Day of the Dead and then nothing. So if we look at the bottom, I'm going to go over to this one. This guy, it's similar to my box bag where they line up on the bottom, but these come at a point with the curve. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, same thing with the Day of the Dead. So this is my six petal basket. This is the template. Remember this no slip material on the back here that grabs. So when you go to cut, you can see how that grabs. Now I don't have enough fabric, but you get the idea. So you'll cut your fabrics and when you cut them, you're gonna get exactly what it is you want. You'll stitch these together just like you would my box bags, basically a point to a point. I call it a roof to a roof. If you think about it, a point here to a point to a point. So you're going to sew three of these together and then you'll sew those three together. That turns into the outside, that turns into the lining for there. But what's going to be really cool about this, when I do the video on this, I'm going to show you how basically before we stitch all of this together, right sides together, you can put a binding on it if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm going to show you how to cut a little bit lower and then we'll put handles on here and it turns into one of those cool storage pods. These podlets, they're gonna be down like this. Imagine this being a little bit lower and handles here. So you can put in all kinds of goodies here. This will work for the six petal basket by cutting that down. I'm gonna move these two out of the way. This guy here and this guy here, I'm going to move those out of the way and I'm going to move the six petal out of the way. And I want to show you the four petal, the four petal. Actually, let's pull this back. The four petal, do you see how much wider that is? So Halloween has come and gone. Christmas is on the way. I want you to think about sewing four of these together. If you're sewing four of these together, you basically have all this real estate right here to put eyes, to put a nose, to put a smile. You can do jack-o'-lanterns, you can do, um, you know, a nice elf, um, you can do reindeer, you can do whatever it is you want. You can do it for Easter and put bunny rabbit ears, all kinds of things. What this will give you, the four, it will give you four of these at the bottom, unlike the six. And what that does is it's not quite as curvy on the sides like this one is, it's gonna be a little bit fuller. So imagine this being wider here and a little bit straighter. So you really can see it turning into a cute pumpkin basket or again, an elf or an Easter bunny or whatever it is. So four petal basket, six petal basket. This is my long box my long box bag. I have a box bag, the box bag template. It's like this, it's shorter though. If you look how long this is, that makes this. And this is another one made from Shirley and you can see on the bottom, we've got six of these coming together. So my long one has six coming together. My regular box bag, there's only four. So again, you're gonna sew point to point. So we're gonna sew this side up to each other and then we're gonna attach the third one. You're gonna have three and you're gonna attach those three. And look how much taller that is. Now, why do I like this one so much? Because it sits nice and sturdy. This is a fusible foam inside. This is the one that I made. And if you've seen any of the pictures that I have with Sylvester, my black and white kitty cat, this is the one that she loves to hop into. So you can see here using the same fabric still gives it some really nice, uh, a nice look. And I love having a lining that is contrasting, but similar. So 
long box bag template, same concept as the curve, uh, the pedal one, and then also as the box bag. But you have choices. You can put handles on here if you want. You can put handles and put this in your car and it turns into your trash bag. You can have a strap that goes on the back of your car seat. So you can put all of your, you know, tools, your paper towels, those kinds of things in there. I want to grab what's inside of here though, because you may have seen me using these. This right here, this is Singer's brand. There's another brand too, these seam rollers. I love a good seam roller for when I really need to press those seams open or to the dark side. And then if I really need some help with pinning, with clipping, with whatever it is, you know, if I've not done a good job, and if y'all are like me, some of you are perfectionists, I'm not. So for me, get her done, but sometimes it's worth it, especially if I'm dealing with curves or I'm dealing with anything that's difficult to use this peel off tape. So I sell Sela. Sela is a permanent tape. You can't sew through that. This is a wash away. I like Dritz's brand because you can wash it away, but you're basically going to peel and it's double sided. So I have this on the website as well. And if you're going to stick this on, you'd roll it on there so it's nice and good. And you're basically adhering it to your fabric. You'd put along here. And when you fold that over, imagine there's tape there and you would roll that down and that'll adhere long enough so you can stitch that down. If you're attaching a zipper, it's a great way to attach your zipper to get it exactly where it is you want. If if you're fearful of zippers, this stuff works really, really well for that. So both of these, the seam roller and the wash away tape, are really great cheater tools that really help you do what you need to do a little bit better. Um, better. Okay, so this I'm going to put on the side and look at Sylvester. She's going right into the basket. Yep, <laughs> she's already. Can you see? It doesn't take long for Sylvester. I have five kitties for them to find. You can see the mess of my studio. But do you see, there's a little Sylvester and it might fall over because it's all flopped on top of a whole bunch of other things. But there's Sylvester with, like, this was made just for me. That's kind of what she thinks. So, all right. So that's the whole purpose of something like that for your tools or for your kitties. All right. I want to show you something that has a, was a request. And then when I got to spend some time with my mother in Naples, I got to spend the last six uh, weeks of, of my mom's life with her. I learned how important an eye mask was, the sleep mask, I should say. And this is a big deal when you have a problem sleeping, when you're just exhausted, when that light is bothering you, all of those things. And there's a ton of reasons why you'd want to wear a sleep mask. But I had made the traditional sleep mask. That was the style here. And I had um, a child and an adult. And it really didn't work out so much the child and the adult because you can see, you know, based on your seam allowance, based on how you finish these off. And when I do the video, I'm going to show you a ton of different things you could do with this. But in the meantime, I'm just going to show you really quick. And I do have this as a kit, a take and make kit. And you can see I added the elastic here and I added the elastic here instead of the elastic that goes across the back. The reason why I did that was my mom said that with this elastic here at the top of her head and this elastic at the bottom of the head, it really held this nice and tight. So this mask in a black was her favorite thing to wear. And and it got to the point where she didn't even want to take it off. So this comes from this template here. Well, when I got home, Beth and Shirley, they had made some samples for me. And this was one that they created. And I thought, hmm, what is that about? This is much higher up. And this was one they really, really liked. And you can see what a difference that is. Look at that. So I created a template and it took quite a while to be able to figure out what to do. But I've got the adult large. I've got the adult small. I'm going to put these on top of each other. I know it's hard to see, but right there. And then I've got a child. And based on your seam allowance, based on how you finish that off, it's really going to be pretty flexible as to how you can make these work. So I want to show you, because this is half a template, what it is you're going to be doing. You're basically going to be putting your fabric on the fold. And when you go to cut, you're going to cut around that 
and then this is what you're going to get. So based on your interfacing, based on whether you want to use batting or something fluffy, whether you want to use for your lighting a minky or a chenille or whatever, imagine cutting this and that now sits much higher on the nose, much higher on the nose, much higher on the nose. I'm going to flip this over so you can see the differences in the size. Adult large, adult small, and then child. And do you see the difference in those sizes? It may be that you want the child for you. And Monkey is coming over to join us too. Hopefully she'll, yep, she'll scoot on by, good. All right, so you can buy the half template that allows you to get that higher nose, or you can buy the regular template. This is the standard one that's out there. When you look at all the videos, when you look at all those paper templates that are out there, this no slip material allows you to cut, 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 get her done, and they'll all be exactly the same because of that no slip material. So this full mask, that's the one that's the standard that's been out there. Beth and Shirley were the ones that talked me into doing this because they came up with this. And not only did they do that, but they also put this on the back for the elastic. So this right here, this helps you when you're sleeping and that elastic doesn't bother you so much. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do these. But these guys right here come in the full set like this, large or small, and then the half set, which is the child, the adult small, and the adult large. So those are options for you as well. And my goal is to show you how, and I know you guys can figure it out on your own, but you leave an opening right here, and you use the larger size, and you're going to stitch around a pocket. And then inside, you're gonna use this template, but you're gonna use a much wider seam allowance. And then you're gonna leave an opening here and you're gonna stuff it with rice or with corn I like for um, the heat, heat things, but it's too bumpy on your eyes. So if you put rice in there or some kind of a soft lentil or whatever, that can go inside of there, even crushed walnut. And the reason why I say put it inside of there is if this is done with minky or with any kind of a plush, you know, velvet or something like that that's not safe for the microwave, you can take out that middle that would probably be done with just a simple cotton, you know, a real simple material, and then you also don't have to worry about this getting all of the heat and the moisture and everything else. And you can take that out and put lavender inside on one. And you can do menthol and eucalyptus in another, which if you've got migraines or headaches, you're going to find that one helps versus another. But they can both be washed, which would be kind of neat things. So you guys probably have, if you've done eye masks before or sleep masks, then you know the, the game on that. I also have an eye mask template. And the eye mask template is different than the sleep mask. It's sits on your face. So when you do have a migraine, when you do have a headache, when you've got whatever it is, it sits right on top of there and it is weighted. And boy, does that feel good. And again, put some of the, you know, different aromas in there that you really like. I like menthol and eucalyptus when I've got a cold. It just helps me to kind of clear up. So that's kind of a cool one too. All right. So another template that I have is the pot holder. And this pot holder right here, if we look at the pot holder, there's a line here. And what that gives me is for my pocket. You can do a pocket so you can put not only a nice little goodie in there, but you can also put it so your hand goes in here. You can add a hanger if you want to. It's totally up to you. But what I want you to think about doing is what else you can do with this. Imagine this out of some really cute fabric and you've got this now that a stuffed animal can go in. Imagine this out of something a little bit less lofty. I've got Insulbright inside of here, but you do a snap and you do a snap and this folds over, you've got a strap and it becomes a really cute cross body bag. Or you can do it just as a, a fanny pack too, if you wanted to do that. You can add a dart here and a dart here if you want to, totally up to you. Darla has lots of ideas of things she wants to do with this. So I can't wait to see what she's gonna do. I've got a whole bunch of other projects that I wanna to do too. So I think when you all go to town on that, you'll be able to come up with some really cool things too. I wanted to do an oven mitt that was really tight. Not tight to where it's hard to get my hand in, but tight where I could grab, actually grab things out of the oven, off of the stove and not worry about dropping them. So you can see I've got different sizes here, seam allowance and how you 
quilt this and what kind of interfacing you're putting in there. Do you see how this is way too big for me? You know, this is more the kind of an oven mitt, imagine the length that most people make, but I can't grab. If you've got bigger hands, this might work for you, but I like the size of the smaller one because I really feel like it's a lot more practical. I like using Insel Bright, or you can use Insel Film, or you can use whatever it is, but you can see here, this already is going to start to do a better job. Once I add my other piece, and do you see right here, this is where I said, okay, I want this to fit a little bit tighter. I'm going to fit a little bit tighter. You can customize this to your hand too. Once you make this, before you put your two pieces together, you put this on and you decide how tight it is you want it to be. If it's for you, if it's for your husband, if it's a gift. So that's the oven mitt, and I call it the shorty because it doesn't go all the way up your wrist. I don't need an oven mitt to go all the way to here. I need an oven mitt that really just protects my hands from those things that are kind of dangerous. All right, so this is one template that I only just got to play with. And I want you to see what I've done here. I've got my one direction fabric and I've added a fusible fleece, lightweight. I've got another non-directional fabric, a fusible fleece, lightweight. You can do SF 101, totally up to you. It just depends on what it is you're gonna be doing. We're not gonna stitch these two together like I have here. This is the template, by the way. And you can see how when you place this on the fold, how that's going to give me that shape. This is down the middle. There's no down the middle yet to any of this. We're going to add a zipper along here. We're going to place this on and we're going to stitch those two pieces together. I've got one zipper side that goes from here to here. When I've got that here and the zipper actually starts right about here and it finishes right about here because I'm going to take that one sided zipper I'm going to bring these together. I'm going to tuck the one piece inside the other. And can you see down the middle starting to happen? That zipper is going to come along. And when I go to zip it up, it's going to turn into this shape. That shape there, this is flat. If you all have seen me talk about the hum bag before, this is a version of the hum bag, but it has a curve to it. And this is basically it. Now this is SF 101. It doesn't have enough substance for me, but if you're putting a bunch of heavy stuff in here or you don't want it to be real heavy, then let me open this up and show you SF 101. Can you see right there, there's my zipper. And if we look at this, it's basically what we had here, that zipper that's along here, and that's what we've got here. Now, what I like to do when I turn this right sides out, instead of finishing this, imagine there's a zipper, and this is gonna go this way. So this is gonna be here, this is gonna be here. This, I put the zipper here. You can see that's the top. I want to have the zipper down here because I want to be able to have a strap that's here. And wherever I have that strap attached, that's where I want the zipper to end. So that's why I chose to have my fabric going this way so that when I put the little Christmas gift cards to their favorite restaurant or some money or whatever it is inside of there and some Hershey's Kisses and whatever candies. This right here is where the top of the zipper is going to be and then I'll have a strap and then this turns into a cute little, it can be for pencils, but it can also be for makeup. It can be for, again, a little gift card for whatever it is that you want to take with you. And because it's Christmassy fabric, it's a great Christmas gift. But look what I did. I added a binding. It's hard to tell here, but this raw edge, remember I said turn right side out. The zipper would be here. This is a raw edge. I'm just going to stitch this closed. And then when I bring this over, we'll find the middle of here and we'll line these up so that they match the middle. And I'm just gonna add a binding. I did a two inch binding. I'm gonna do a two and a half inch in the video and in the directions, but imagine a binding right there, two and a half inches that's a little bit wider. You can see it's not very wide on the back side there. So a little bit wider and you can do it in the same fabric like I did, but I think a contrasting fabric would be really cute. And again, I wanted this to be the top so there's a handle, a strap that's there, and then the zipper 
turns into that closed. Now, I don't recommend doing a lot of these with a seasonal fabric because they're only going to use it for so long. But if the gift is what's in the bag, then why not do it with a holiday fabric so that you can hang that on the tree, you can embroider their name, you can do whatever it is. But this is called the down the middle, down the middle bag. But I want to mention one other thing that you're going to be able to do with this too. If you have that zipper that's here, you don't fold it here and you don't fold it here. You have a zipper that goes like this. And then you can put the binding here or you can finish this off. And again, have a strap here if you want to. But now we've got a cute little pencil case. We've got a cute little case for your sunglasses, for your reading glasses. So this down the middle bag now turns into just a cute little zipper case too. So I can't wait to see what you all do with that because I think that's going to be a whole lot of fun as well. Since we're talking about little cases, let me pull over one. And lots of you have bought this even before I had it done. So I love it. This is a chapstick case. And this can be for lipstick or chapstick. But what I like is it's a peekaboo. The peekaboo allows you to have vinyl. Now, I like this vinyl. Darla told me about this stuff. This vinyl here, you can see, it has this little protective layer. But basically, it has these hearts that are inside of there. You can do a clear vinyl if you want to. And even on my practice one that I have here, these hearts don't go with this fabric, but it still looks cute. So you notice this one is flat. See how it's just flat there? And this one is flat. And when you do it flat, it's going to put some wear and tear on that seam. So it's going to start to fall apart there. So what I did with the template, I'll pull it out in a minute. I want you to see that it's raised up. Can you see how that's right there? You can see how that's raised up. So what I did was I cut the two fabrics with the chapstick template. So the front and back, and oh, by the way, this fabric, if you're gonna do a directional fabric, notice I did them in the same direction. Do this one in the opposite. So when this goes down, these hearts are face up. The only that part that's non-direction or the wrong direction is this part right here. But what I did with this, instead of using this template to cut this, I basically took this and I cut the width. Okay, do you see how I'm basically gonna place this along the bottom? And I'm gonna use this template and I'm gonna cut here and over here. I'd start over here first and I would cut and notice how far up I go. You decide where you want it to go. And when I place this here, I'm gonna use this template basically to put an angle. So when I go to cut that, that angle and that angle, you could fold it in half and do them at the same time if you want to. So you don't have to worry about them not being exactly. But you're going to stitch the bottom down. You're going to stitch one side down. Who cares that it doesn't line up with that? We're lining up here. And I have written directions for this project already. So if you like this and you don't want to wait for the video, I'll send you the written directions. But I'm lining this up. And when I stitch this here, this already lined up. This starts to create that nice little pocket there. And then when I bring this over, that plastic, this vinyl, it's going to be sticking way over here. So I just scoot that up and I'm holding that over as I'm stitching. And then when I finish stitching, that gives me that little bit of a pocket. I like the idea of this and I like the idea so much that instead of making it this length, <clears throat> I'm going to double the fabric my fabric like this, maybe not totally double it, but I'm going to make this longer. So it will hold pencils and lie liners and lip pencils and those kinds of things. So you can make it longer. And you also can stick in, you know, a check or some money or whatever, just some coins if you're going to make one of these for a little one. And you can do whatever kind of jump ring you want, whatever kind of you know, as accessory embellishment that you want. But I like doing the snaps here. And you can see this one would hold keys. This one just holds a little whatever. This clips onto the backpack. It can clip onto your belt, onto your purse, whatever it is. This clips on and off. So if you wanted to put your keys on here and you keep this in the house or you keep the, this in the car and then you're grabbing this, you know, it's totally up to you. But what I love is that you're starting out with just a real simple fabric, SF-101, SF-101, 
and those two there turn into something like this. Notice a non-directional fabric on the inside and on the outside, that's always going to be easier for you to do. So that's my chapstick case. And again, I can't wait to see what you all do. I've already gotten lots of really great comments from the people that have bought this. So I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody's going to do with this. So that's going to be a fun one. All right. So a couple things since I've talked about, you know, doing some things with, um, you know, fusibles and those kinds of things at the sewing machine or at the ironing board. This is something new that I'm carrying. I have two different sizes of these Teflon sheets. I do not press anything anymore without a Teflon sheet. If I'm using a fusible, if I'm using an interfacing, that sheet, this is a 16 by 24 and I also have a 12 by 16, so they're two different sizes. So these guys here to me are just really, really valuable. So I've started carrying those too. I think that's a great thing. Um, let me pull over a couple other templates that I don't have projects done for you yet. This is a gift card holder and you can see I've started cutting one side here. Basically we're going to cut two of these when we stitch them together. It's going to be like this. So imagine I have another fabric in here. You can put a jump ring here if you want to. You can put an eyelet or you can just sew in a piece of elastic or a tag or whatever. And then this will be a perfect gift card, gift card holder. Or you can put your credit cards in there or whatever it is. You can put your ID in there. So this guy here, gift card holder, these will whip up really, really fast. That's an assembly line project. I have no sample to show you on this, but I cannot wait to do this. This is an eyeglass case, and basically we're going to be folding this up. Notice this shape here. What that's going to do is give you enough, just like that chapstick pocket that I created, it gives you enough room so when this folds up, there's enough room for you to put your glasses in, for you to put your sunglasses, your reading glasses, whatever it is. And then you can add the eyelet, the snap, the um, magnetic snap, whatever it is that you want with that. This is going to be another eyeglass case. I've got to make changes to this. I tried to make a couple samples and I want this to be straight instead of curved. So that's going to be a fun one that's coming out. Two different eyeglass cases and this last one will be one that goes over a book that will hold with elastic, hold your reading glasses, hold you know your bookmarkers, whatever it is, and it can be a bookmarker too. So if you like to read but you need your reading glasses for that, that's a big one. I've had this template out forever but I didn't put it on the website till recently. This is a luggage tag. So the luggage, not luggage tag, a luggage wrap. So imagine doing this out of whatever kind of that scuba fabric, all kinds of fun things. And we're basically going to have Velcro and Velcro and that will roll up. But it's also going to do a whole bunch of other things too. So stay tuned for that. This is going to be a fun one. I can't wait to show you this. This is a gusset bag. There's a fold that's right here and that's going to go here and that's going to go around here and it's go around here and it's a fussy me pouch because you're going to get a fussy cut frame. So if you've got fabric that you want to feature right in here, can't wait to show you the gusset for that. This one, if you've noticed that all kinds of projects are using campers, vintage campers, this is the simple version, just simple fabric that has the camper on it. I used felt, just two pieces of felt that I stitched wrong sides together, and then one of these little crocheted buttons, and that gives me that tire, the wheel that's there, and I added binding all the way around, and just a handle, so this can be a pot holder. So you can do it that way, but I cannot wait to see what you all do with the markings that are here. The markings are just there as suggestions. So imagine you've got silver fabric right down here, and then you do some kind of a white or hot pink or lime green, and then you add a door that's gonna have the door handle and be decorative, windows with curtains and curtains. There's another window with another curtain, another curtain, flags that are going this way and going this way, or Christmas lights that are decorated, the wheel that's there. This, the bottom of the camper, and this, the top of the camper. I think some of you are just going to go to town. Those of you that love to do free motion quilting, you can do all of that with scraps and with your foot of the sewing machine, and I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to that. I came out with the doggy mitt because Martelli had 
a doggy stocking, and I love it, but it's so big, and you can see, you can make it smaller. So I made it smaller, and it was too small. So this would be great if you're doing a hot pad, if you're doing um, one of the stockings or whatever it is, but it's too small. I had to do wrong sides together because I didn't have enough to flip. So I made the template larger, and you basically can use something like this for a hot pad or for a pot holder or for stockings. And when you do this, let me show you the two different sizes. <clears throat> do you see how much bigger it is? Change your seam allowance if you don't want to make it quite so big, but it can be a stocking, it can be a mug rug, it can be a hot pad, it can be a pot holder. So there's a lot that you can do with that. And if you noticed on this one, you can use your Cricut, you can use your Silhouette. It doesn't have to be for dogs. You can do it for bears and for cats and for cougars and whatever kind of wildlife you like. I mentioned Martelli's stockings, and Martelli has a bunch of stockings, and I have a bunch of stockings. This is a new one that I came out with. I have a smaller stocking, and this is really popular if you're doing advent calendars or if you wanted to hang smaller stockings, if you wanted to dress your table with silverware. And this one has the option of a fussy cut. So if you wanted to have Santa's sleigh going this way or you wanted a Merry Christmas or somebody's name embroidered, that's an option. But this one, the long stocking, Stocking, you can see it's just longer. And I wanted to do a primitive stocking. I put a little bit of um, polyfill in there. I sewed this closed a little bit. I would stick this inside of here. And then you can use whatever kind of embellishments you want. A hot glue gun, of course, would help this out a whole lot more. I can have that glued on there if I wanted to. I've got this that I could wrap around and do all kinds of fun things. There's so many embellishments that are out there when you start looking at all the different things. Look how adorable that is. So this can be stuffed, but this can also be stuffed with money. This can be stuffed with a gift card. It can be stuffed with silverware. So this, the long stocking to me, it's a primitive look. But if you change that fabric out, it doesn't have to be. You could do this out of, you know, a nice shiny, um, you know, a, a, um, you know, a, a really expensive um, kind of a decorative fabric. So you can have a whole lot of fun with it. So this guy here, the smaller guy there, the gnome, and then I have another one, this little oven mitt. These all would be great as a garland. So this gnome makes gnomes. You can see here, add a little bit of decoration. That's for Christmas. I can do this for St. Patrick's Day. You know, I added a little bit here. You can do something different for St. Patrick's Day, or you can do it for Easter, or you can do whatever it is. The more embellishment you add per season, the less you have to do here. So this one, you can see I've just made him more, you know, woodsy. But again, based on what it is that I put on top of here, he could turn into Christmas real fast. So make these, all of these, and hang these as a garland. I don't know if y'all do decorations on your um, mantle, um, on the tree or not, but you know a lot of people aren't putting the big um, decorations up this year, so you can do all of these. This is the size of the stocking that you get here. This is the size of here, so you can see how they're similar but different. But make all of these into a garland, and I think you could have a whole lot of fun with that too. Beth did the advent calendar that I have on the back wall. I pilfered some of the stockings from there, so there's only 20 on there, but you could add little notes in there. I wouldn't do an advent calendar. I would do the 12 days of Christmas. So I'd only have 12 stockings, and you can decorate them in whatever way it is that you like. Martelli makes the elf stocking. I make this medium-sized stocking here, and then we have a huge stocking that Martelli makes as well, and then there's the paw stocking, and you can see that has that etched on there. So we have other stocking templates for you as well. I'm going to do a video later on. I have written directions, and I've done videos for you in the past that show the magic stocking, and the magic stocking is really popular because you're stacking your fabrics and you're cutting with the template and the layer that you stack those fabrics, when you cut around, you go right to the sewing machine and you stitch them. And you pull in one side and you pull out, then you pull in the other side and pull out. It's a stocking. It's magic. It's really cool. You can add a cuff if you want to. It's totally up to you. Now, years ago, my burp pad template turned into an owl taggy toy, and these are just a couple of them that I made. And I had people calling and saying, I want to know how to make the owl taggy toy. And I had printed templates 
for the ears. And finally, I had enough people that said, why don't you make a template for the stuffed owl? You can see this doesn't match. You can see this doesn't match. You can see this doesn't match because these were all done with my paper template for the ears. So they're all different. The bottoms are pretty similar, but the ears were different. So this now makes it similar. And so they'll all be the same. You can add a pocket on the front for a, a book or a pocket on the back for a book or for a card or whatever it is for money. But this little owl turns into a flat owl taggy toy like these, or you can stuff them. I also have owl toy, taggy toy kits that give you the eyes, there's flowers, there's buttons that give you all kinds of ribbons so you can add taggy toys or the taggy toy, uh, taggy ribbons around the side. If you've got a baby, the eyes that are flowers, the eyes that are buttons, those are not safe for babies because they might take them and put them in their mouth. So be aware of what age is going to be good for those. If you're going to do for a baby, don't do like this, do like this. And I've got a video that shows you how to do it. It's just the template is new because it's going to make it, I don't want to say one and done, but it's certainly going to make it a whole lot easier. And then of course I have the towel toppers. I've done videos now on all of the towel toppers. This is the version one dress. You can see that arm that's much sharper. This is the version two. The version two is the one I'm going to be recommending to everybody. You can see it's just got, when we look at these two, see how much sharper that curve is? I'm going to flip these over so you can see them. You can see this, it's a much more curve, and this is a much more gradual curve. They still look like little girl dresses. They're still vintage towel toppers. This is just faster to cut and easier to sew. I have a video that's gonna show you how to do this where that neck doesn't have to be finished off by flipping it and top stitching and adding some kind of trim to cover up the inconsistencies. And you have a towel on the front, you have a towel on the back with these. And these are a whole lot of fun to do. I also have the Mask Keeper. The Mask Keeper is one of the easiest ones to do. The Mask Keeper template was originally made to put your masks in. So if you wanted to wear masks way back in the day, people really had to wear masks now. It's kind of optional, but I think we're not quite over those days. So the Mask Keeper allows you to put not only masks, but you can put your coins and your lipsticks and whatever that's in there. You notice how this one says you had me at woof and it's perfectly centered. It's because I came out with a fussy cut frame. So you can use your fussy cut frame. I'm gonna take this and imagine that I had something that wasn't already placed. And see, do you see how I can say copy? Seriously, very seriously. You can choose what it is that you want. When you find what it is you want, this goes inside. I remove that and cut it. I've got a video that'll show you about the Apple Core towel topper and the fussy cut frame because these you can see here I have the sip sip and I wanted that sip sip to be placed just so and with that so this allows you to do that so mask keeper towel topper bigger easier to do this one's a little bit smaller it just depends on the look that it is you want to get you can see this is a whole lot of fabric and it may be too much this one is just a little more subtle this one was my favorite, but I'm thinking I'm loving the dressing, the dress more. But do you see how cute this is? This is the tab top. This tab top, depending on how you've got your kitchen set up, you know, I may want to put this down further. So this allows you to have two fabrics showing. One fabric showing, one fabric showing, one fabric showing. You're not seeing those other fabrics. The tab top allows you to add both of those fabrics. Okay, I've got a whole bunch more stuff that I could show you, but I think these are most of the things that are new. So if you have questions, feel free to call me. Calling is always better than email. Some of my emails just don't make it to me or they get lost in my spam and show up three days later. So you can always call me. I'll have my phone number on the screen. My email will be on there as well. Follow me on YouTube and on Facebook and that way you can find out about specials that I offer and discounts and those kinds of things. And I have written directions on a lot of these and videos on a lot of these, but I'll be doing videos as more time passes and you'll see lots and lots of things. I've got 200 plus videos for 
you already. So if you haven't followed me or liked me or subscribed or all of those goodies, go ahead and do all of that stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found something that you see that's inspirational. And if you have not tried the no slip material, no slipping, no kidding. I promise you're going to love it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.